I started yoga in part because I had an acute scoliosis. And one teacher told me that the scoliosis would be the best teacher I could possibly have in yoga. And he was right. There have been so many advances in research on movement. And in particular, I've been drawn to the research on scoliosis since, of course, I've been affected by it. And in this practice, we'll be looking at how one side of the back muscles become very contracted, become very uh, engaged and strong, and the other side less so. And if you are like me and you've got this going on, or if you don't know what side might be a stronger side for you, this could be a, a good practice for you. It uh, is a practice that really strengthens the back muscles and creates a sense of balanced action on both sides of the spine. So let's begin by coming to a seated pose. Place your palms just to your low back. And then just notice in the palm of your hand, what side, what side of the ribs, what side the low rib area around the kidneys, what side inflates, what side do you feel that's more lively, more bright? more fullness in the palms of your hand, just uh, with your eyes closed so that you can bring this uh, inner awareness so vividly to recall now, to think about like what feels like for you, like the stronger side, the more muscular side the more developed side? What side feels like the more collapsed side? Now place your arms in front of you and with the palms facing the ribs and do the same thing. Just breathe in deeply and just feel how the ribs expand into your hands and breathe out. And just with that tactile impression, you can feel just like you felt in the kidney area, that side that feels like you've got a stronger and fuller breath. Sometimes without these tactile impressions, without our hands there, it's really hard to know like what, what side we seem to favor, what side feels like the strongest. Scoliosis happens when we have one side stronger than the other. And if you weren't able to tell with your hands to your low back or with your hands to your ribs, what side feels stronger, you may be just having someone look at your back. Usually it's quite easy, it's quite visible for people to tell what is your stronger side. And that side tends to pull the, the spine uh, in, in the direction of the strength, obviously. So you have this convex uh, spine. And what uh, biomechanical researchers are finding out now is that there are things that we can do to strengthen the opposite side. So I used to always feel like, oh, by massaging the, the really strong side to lengthen those muscles, you know, that was kind of the way out. But they're finding more and more, and again, this is more of a hypothesis than a known fact right now. They're finding more and more that that concave side, by strengthening that side in the practice, you get much a better alignment. And as, as one side pulls strongly to that strong side, what happens is the axial rotation, the spine tends to start rotating so that um, you get an unevenness in hip, in the hip. And a lot of people feel that in the SI joint and the low back. It's kind so, of a combination of things that go on. Let's come to all fours position. And of course, the thing that we, we do so frequently just to, to get the, 
the awareness to the spine is to lift the chin and sit bones and then draw from the navel back. So you just uh, start to feel like as you move the spine forward and back, you start to feel like a difference here. You start to feel a lot of sensations here just in the movement. So as you just move at your speed very nicely, See if you can keep that awareness to that side that was really strong, really lifting into your palm. So now that you know that's your stronger side, see if you can breathe in as you're doing this cat cow movement. Breathe in to find fullness in the opposite side. Let's come to sit and just start noticing in this way, this kind of, they call it the Z seat. You know, you create a Z with, um, with your left shin bone in uh, front and your right sit bone behind. See if you can get the hip points down evenly. Right? And of course, it's an asymmetric pose. It's going to be a little hard to do that. But you'll see from one side to the other in this pose, one side, you can really get close to getting those sit bones down. The other side, not so much. Just get a nice length here as you press down through the left hand and get a nice reach with your right hand. Now the left hand, if you're really working the left hand, you'll see that you'll be able to get the right sit bone a little bit closer to the earth. Just get a lot of length there. Now do, do the opposite by taking your hand right at the kneecap of the back leg, lift up your uh, left arm and try to keep those sit bones firmly down as you reach over to the side and just notice that. So we're lengthening as we try to just to bring a little bit more awareness to the spine. You start to see the paraspinal muscles that could really use just a little bit more fullness, a little bit more strength um, on that side, the non-dominant side that you have. Inhale, rise up, come to the Z position, Z seat in the opposite uh, side. So as you take your uh, shin bone forward, Press down and just notice now on this side, can you sit, can you find the sit bones a little bit uh, more rooted or does it feel like oh, this side is, is really whacked compared to the other side? And this information is really important in your yoga practice because as you take your arm up, because as you work the yoga practice and you reach over, you start to see, oh, on one side, the, the non-dominant side, I really should be working that side a little bit more to create a little bit more balance, to bring a little bit more similarities between the right side and the left side here. Because, of course, that non-dominant side over time just uh, takes um, the hip out of whack, and it starts to work in the mid thoracic spine. So you get a lot of pain between the shoulders. Some of us, oh, sorry. Uh, let's go to the opposite side. Take your left hand to the knee, take your right arm up, press your knee into the palm of your hand as you reach over and just get this nice length here. So rather than massaging those overworked muscles on one side, the, the, a lot of uh, biomechanics today are emphasizing strengthening that non-dominant side. Come back to the center and in all fours position, reach your right arm out, look back and make sure your feet are right behind your knees. Lift your right arm up and reach your left left foot back. Now, sometimes this is not so easy for some of us. So, so just to see if you can keep an alignment that works nicely for you. So in this way, it balances out the action. 
If you notice that the kidneys were collapsed on one side, and you had kind of a, in the upper chest area, you know, a dominant side too. This is one of the things that just allows you to, let's come to the other side, allows you to um, balance out these actions. So as you lift your opposite arm up and reach your leg back, just to see how you can hold the pose with a nice engagement. And it just kind of balances out the sides here as we work on strengthening those uh, paraspinal muscles. Release your hand down. Now reach your right arm forward again. Reach your left foot back. Now make a fist with your right hand. Draw your knee in to the elbow. Hug in. And now reach out and spread your fingers. So just by spreading the fingers and then making a fist, you can tone the muscles of the upper arm that allows you to get like strength in the shoulder area. As you do these actions of hugging in, kind of like a cat pose that the spine becomes and extending out. One more time. Draw in and extend out and release your hand. Come either to a child's pose or downward facing dog, just a, as an interim pause here, a nice symmetric pose. And in whatever pose you chose, once again, focus on the breath and especially the breath, how it affects the muscles of the spine. How by taking a longer and fuller in breath, how you can just feel that strengthening the back muscles very fully. Keep that fullness, keep that aliveness. And come back down to your knees. And let's do the opposite here. So reach your opposite arm forward, line it up with your ear, spread your fingers, reach your right leg back or whatever's opposite for you. Make a fist with your hand, hug in. You wanna go really slow so that you can work on strength here strengthening the muscles that really support the spine. And maybe that area, that non-dominant side, that concave side of your curve, that, uh, that you can just uh, allow your breath and the movement to bring strength there as you spread your fingers to expand, you spread your toes to tone the muscles of the leg, the spread of the fingers help tone the muscles of the upper arm. And one more cycle here. The slower you go, the more you can engage fully. Reach out and release. And with your toes tucked under, draw your pelvis back. And just work your toes nicely here. See if all 10 toes can really press into the mat nicely. And while they're pressing into the mat, see if the heels can hug in toward the midline. The heels want to externally rotate out. Let's see if you can draw them in. And maybe even walk your hands up to your knees to come to a seated position with your toes pressing down. You get this nice awareness all the way from the feet to the crown of the head and you feel really fiery in the toe area. That's going to help when we create a nice solid foundation in our Tadasana. So let's do that. Come back to downward facing dog or however you can make your way up to the front of the mat. If you like using blocks, by all means, have them. 
So as you stand at the front of the mat with that uh, uh, action that we just did with the toes, your toes are still nice and fiery. Just pause here for a moment with your eyes closed, with your foundation, the foundation of your feet, just rooting down from the pelvis to the earth. So you feel like this freedom from the pelvis to the crown of the head. Engage the breath really fully. Delight in this freedom. And with your eyes bright, inhale, sweep your arms up and reach them back. Exhale, now come down to the forward fold and just pause here for a moment here. In the forward fold, I like using the tall blocks because it allows for just a lot of length in the spine, even in a forward fold, which traditionally shortens the spine, as you know. Reach your right arm away from the block, reach your left foot away from the earth, and you just come to that uh, variation of that bird dog pose, digasana, that we were in. Bend your elbow, bend your knee, and hug in. Inhale, expand out. Again, draw in while you keep stability on your standing leg. You get both sides of the spinal muscles really active here. Hug in again and reach out and hug in and reach out. Release your hand, release your foot. Place your hands to your low back with knees bent. Root down to rise up and pause again in Tadasana. Just notice the difference. Notice as you breathe in very fully, how can you get both sides to feel like you've got the, a feeling of equipoise, of balanced action. Inhale, sweep your arms up with your fingers spread to tone the muscles all the way to the heart. Exhale, lower yourself down. Same thing, opposite side. So inhale, reach your left arm up, your right foot back. Let's get this nice length. Now bend your elbow, bend your knee to hug in. Inhale to expand out, draw in. Just notice for yourself, like, is this side feeling strong? Does it come easy on this side? Or does it feel like it was the opposite side that you had that feeling? That's the yoga. That's just kind of knowing the body knowing where you should take your emphasis in your practice to build this uh, equipoise, this balanced action. One last cycle here, you reach out and you hug in and reach out and lower your hand and your foot down, bend your knees, Take your hands to your low back, root down to rise up. Reach up and reach way back, standing back bend. Now let's do that on the floor. So exhale, lower yourself all the way down. Come with your hands alongside your ankles to a plank position and lower yourself down. As you lower yourself down, place your hands just alongside your pelvic area with your palms facing down. This locust pose is really a, a wonderful backbending pose to strengthen the muscles of the spine. So as you press your hands down, lift your heart up, exhale, soften. Two more, inhale, press down to lift your heart up, exhale, soften. One more time, press your hands down to lift your heart up. Exhale and soften. Keep your hands where they are. 
press your forehead down. And as you press your forehead to the floor, inhale, lift your feet up off the floor. Exhale, take them down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, down. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, down. Let's combine the action of both the lifting of the upper body and the legs. Inhale, lift it all up. Exhale, down. Two more. Inhale, you rise up. Exhale down. Notice what side feels like so much more effort. Inhale, lift up. Exhale and down. Come to child's pose or downward facing dog again. Just whichever pose that so you can just bring your awareness now to the back body. Notice that side that might feel just a little bit more contracted. Now see if you can bring your breath to make the opposite side really full. That non-dominant side. So we can really give this care and feeding, nurturing to that non-dominant side as a way to bring just a balance here in the spinal muscles. Inhale, walk, come to all fours if you're in child's pose to make your way to um, a standing pose, to Tadasana, to take a wide stance. Have a nice uh, stability in the feet Turn your right toes out. Inhale, take your arms up and just get engaged nicely. So in Utita Trikonasana, this triangle pose, you draw in from your fingers to your heart to your pelvis. You draw in from your toes to your pelvis. So that pelvic, that core of the pose that this center of gravity here, the hara as the Japanese call it, you, you draw into that area. And from that stability, you just draw over to the um, shin bone. Take your uh, left hand to your waist and just pause here. So with your left hand now to that um, kidney area that we were working on before, Let's see if we can uh, create lots of fullness in that area. So look down toward the floor. Let your pelvis reach back so your inner thighs go wide and apart. And into that space, draw your tailbone down. Find fullness in the palm of your hand. Really breathe into that area to bring strength to the muscles and the kidney area. Keep that and lift your arm up. Just notice as you draw your attention to your to the foundation, as you hug in from the front foot to the back foot, can you keep that stability as you inhale and lift yourself up easily? Exhale, release your hands. Come to the opposite side. So as you turn your left toes out, Line up from the front heel to the back arch. Inhale, lift your arms up, spread your fingers. Get this nice engagement from the feet hugging in toward each other with a nice spread to the fingers to get tone in the upper arms. Draw over either to your block, to your shin, some, some of you to the floor. But for most of us, if we take the hand to the floor, this in inside, underside rib area just gets just a little bit um, uh, less engaged here. So on this side, in the same way, look at the floor, take your upper hand to that kidney area, 
See how as you breathe into that area, as you take your pelvis back, you can find more fullness. Breathing into it, just allowing the inner thighs to move back and apart and into that space, draw down through the tailbone, take the head of the arm bone back, look up, twist the thoracic spine, move the underside ribs up toward the sky, reach up, root down to inhale and lift yourself up, exhale, release your hands and come to Tadasana again. Take this time in Tadasana to reflect or you might want to lie down and end your practice just assimilating all the actions that we did. Thank you so much for joining me in the practice. Namaste.